All right. So today is going to be a comment response again. Um, mostly because uh, I need to check the Odyssey comments more often. The library comments, uh, if, if you're on that platform. I, I advise everybody join these platforms, even though I've got some disagreements with some recent comments made by the CEO. Uh, it's still a good platform, you know? And it's not like I, it's not like I love Google. So I, I would significantly much rather support uh, this platform than a platform that started by was started by the CIA. Um, so, well, I mean bought out by a platform that was started by the CIA. But it's still basically that, because, I mean, if Google owns YouTube and it's no longer functioning like YouTube, which a lot of YouTubers are saying and being accurate about, then it's not like it's not just Google now and, and YouTube, like, died when it was bought. So my point in general is that... Um, uh, you should still use the platform, even though you might disagree with the CEO, because if you didn't, then we wouldn't use any platforms. Just, you know, thought I'd bring that up because somebody asked me about it in DMs. <laughs> um, and if you want to, you can support my content by going to jeremiahharding.com slash LBRY. Uh, and if you do that, you can uh, accept the uh, invite bonus as well as long as you verify your email. And then I get supported because you watch my content on a place that pays me for views, unlike YouTube's salty ass, which still hasn't paid me and which changed its rules like midstream so that <laughs> you have to have 4,000 watch hours of uh, views in order to get whatever. Point is, uh, I got a comment there that I want to respond to um, because it's bullshit. Two comments, actually, from the same user. Now, <clears throat> make no mistake. I'm not trying to say that this is, like, universally, you know, I, I don't want to make it seem like I hate everyone who supports this theory. I do disagree, though. <laughs> Man, do I disagree. So, I thought I'd bring up why I disagree uh, in this in this video, because the... the the comments go, um, nobody formed the cathedral, his quotes, least of all progressives. It's an emergent system. Uh, this is on my cathedral video. Ga Galileo, um, I, I believe would be like a male, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm not misgendering you or whatever. But the point is that like, um, yeah, no, uh, everything formed at one point even if you're like a christian who believes that like everything was created then you would just say it was formed by god like six thousand years ago so no it's fucking stupid to say that it's not um formed <laughs> and people making a system no matter how emergent you want to claim it is um they form that it's still formation um if it has a form then it was formed fucking obviously but that's not the crux of this uh the second layer of the bullshit is his comment the state is only part of the cathedral other significant components are the academy the corporations and the media now i already went over this in the video so i can tell he didn't watch it I don't hate all people who believe in the cathedral. Some of them um, are, are longtime supporters of mine. Some of them support my stuff still. Uh, some of them are on the right page. But, holy shit, do I hate it when people try to comment on my shit and they haven't actually watched it. It's real fucking infuriating, if I do say so my fucking self. Uh, because I went over this. I, I, I went over this. I went over the fact that the state is not just government. It's also what the government creates, supports, and enables. And the term already exists. People just don't like to use it because it was created by the left. Or in this case, because they're wrong about it. 
they're using a co-opted version that like was created by right wingers to justify some of their bullshit whereby the state is not the state's creations and what the state supports um it's just the government itself which is false especially since you want to talk media what's the media i mean if you're gonna make it a monolith you're probably talking about the mainstream you're probably not talking about me right Oh, maybe I'm a member at the cathedral. Ooh, wouldn't that be some, some fucking hot shit? Um, spewing right out of the asshole these people call mouse. Uh, <laughs> and, and I do, again, mean the people who just don't listen to my content and then feel the need to comment on it. But this person says, um, the media as a monolith. Well, <laughs> hate to break it to you. But the mainstream media is entirely comprised of corporations and a very limited fucking handful of them. And those corporations are directly supported and fed by <gasps> government. So you just confirmed what I said. You just confirmed what I said in the video. If you had watched the video, you would know that I already basically said that and that that's why I disagree. I implore you, watch it again. You will see, that's exactly what I fucking said. So, just to be super clear, don't comment unless you're going to watch the video. Because then we won't have these messy mishaps. But just to drive the point in a little bit further, I will go to the wiki page for anti-statism since you clearly never have done that before and I'm going to read you some stuff uh, anti-statism is any approach to social economic or political philosophy that rejects statism an anti-statist is one who opposes intervention by the state into personal social and economic affairs in anarchism this is characterized by a complete rejection of all hierarchical rulership now I kind of disagree with that, but it's a good intro, and if that's the case, then a corporation certainly qualifies as a hierarchy. It still qualifies, even under those terms. Um, I don't think getting rid of hierarchy is possible. I think they're still going to be voluntary hierarchy. I think the order structure of a commune would necessarily be hierarchical, and even vertically so, in some areas. I just think that uh, that it'd be more horizontal than than otherwise. Like the distri the distribution of power would be more like this uh, to a, a a point that was relatively close to ground, um, or several points that were relatively close to ground. It'd be more like either a, a, a trapezoid or um, a pyramid, rather than uh, sorry, a, a very shallow pyramid, uh, rather than the like other like hierarchies that maybe capitalists would form where there's more of this kind of structure where there's a lot between the ground and the the point um <clears throat> and by that i mean like <clears throat> the there would be a lot of people on certain levels whereas in like a, a more horizontal hierarchy there would be less people in the way of the people at the bottom and the top i still think either one would form um minus government uh i just you know i i don't think that it'd be unethical because people wouldn't be forced into certain arrangements and because they could make their own arrangements much more easily uh but to say that anti-statism doesn't oppose corporations and the media it, it means you don't understand what the state is to anti-statists to anarchists uh, and, and, and given that the, vi uh, the the video was primarily directed at libertarians and anarchists who use the term the cathedral, uh, not at the people who use the term because they already believe that progressives are the root of all evil, um, the general thing here is that, like, I'm trying to speak to the people who might not believe that. I'm trying to speak to the people who might think, hey, maybe conservatives were a problem too. Maybe um, the regressives, the 
the reactionaries are also a problem, and Moldbug might be pushing an agenda. Uh, and maybe I don't want to support that agenda just because I want to talk about a uh, conspiracy. You know, little things. Um, in the overview section, the wiki goes on to say, anti-statism is present in a variety of greatly differing positions, see, and encompasses an array of diametric concepts and practices. Anti-statists differ greatly according to the beliefs they hold in addition to anti-statism, as significant difficulty in determining whether a thinker or philosophy is anti-statist is the problem in defining the state itself. Terminology has changed over time, and past writers often used the word state in a different sense than we used it today. Anarchist Mikhail Bakunin used the term simply to mean a governing organization, while other writers used the term state to mean any lawmaking or enforcement agency. Revolutionary socialist Karl Marx defined the state as the institution used by the ruling class of a country to maintain the conditions of its rule. According to liberal Max Weber, the state is an organization with an effective legal monopoly on the legitimate use of physical force in a particular geographic area. Now, by those particular definitions, let's start with Weber. Uh, if, if an organization maintains that force monopoly and uses their privilege, power, etc. to grant certain institutions with in, extra privileges, you know, and, and legal protections, like Konkin said, the corporation is an imitation of the state. So, um, by that metric... Uh, the state includes the corporations because the corporations are not only benefiting from the violence monopoly, but reifying it and giving it more power. That includes, again, the media. So for the for, like remainder of this video, I'm just going to say corporations because the media you're talking about isn't Sally writing an op-ed. Uh, because she's a senior citizen living in an old folks home and she thinks it's the only way to get her opinion out there um you're not talking about her you're talking about like cnn um so no it's still a corporation and i'm not gonna fucking say all that all the time uh, by Marx's definition, the state uh, would include those who uh, in induce its justifying ideologies and the justifying ideologies of capital itself, which includes corporations. By uh, Mikhail Bakunin's definition, it would certainly include that because he was a class warrior. Um, there's no definition that's commonly accepted of the state that does not include... The corporations you're talking about. If the state is the reason the corporations exist, it is. Then um, the state includes the corporations. You see, if 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 I'm uh, the if, if my farm is the reason that the chickens are laying eggs because I'm the one feeding them and my farm is the one housing them then my farm is producing the eggs, and the eggs are part of the farm. Does that make sense? I don't know why it wouldn't. I don't know why it wouldn't make sense to say that institutions created by institutions are not somehow part and parcel of that institution, especially if that institution, the parent institution, is expected and regularly relied upon for the creation of of said institutions. Co corporations are fucking created by the state. They are created by the state with privileges and legal protections and additional benefits like corporate personhood where they can throw a fuck of money at the government to get what the policies that they want, right? Um, these are all aspects of an institution that belongs to another institution. If corporations fall out of line, they lose their corporate status. Uh, at least if they fall out of line in a way that the state doesn't want them to fall out of line in order to hide something. Or something. Nah, they would never do that. Not like they put private contractors overseas when they want to pull out of Afghanistan or something. No, they don't do that. Um, anyway, after I'm done redlining my mic here for a second, um, 
the, the whole notion here that I want to bring up is that the state cannot disinclude that which the state creates. Um, you are what you do to a certain extent. And the whole idea of the state is that it can create things that normal people can't. It has monopoly power. You know? I'm working on a, a documentary uh, that, that should be, like, very thorough, uh, going uh, against police brutality and misconduct. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'll give you guys updates when I've got more. Right now I'm in the stage where I'm researching people and trying to reach out for interviews. But the general reason I bring that up is because the same production company that put it out put out another one called Monopoly on Violence. And it goes over even some right libertarian uh, interpretations of this particular message. Um, but like the whole thing goes back to leftist ideas. The idea of the state, the idea of anarchy, the idea of libertarianism as a political force, it all goes back to the left. And if you don't think that, then it's because you don't understand the history and shouldn't talk about it. So to claim that the left is some evil body while also trying to defend the concept of anarchy um, belies history and reason. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people on the right don't seem to have looked into the history of things significantly enough to even know what they'd be going back to with a reactionary ass. Like... I just can't stand it, you know? I'm going to keep reading on this page. Uh, political theories. Um, <laughs> besides cynicism and nihilism. <laughs> Gotta love how they slip that in there. Nihilism is not anti-statism. It's just anti, like, literally everything. And not in the sense of the cool song by a band called Dead, which is D-E-D. -E I woke up with that this morning. But um, in, in a sense of, like, uh, nothing matters, even if you think something matters, it doesn't resign yourself to the nothing nothingness. It's what Nietzsche, Nietzsche hated. It's what all rational thinkers should hate. Hell, even Diogenes would have hated nihilism. So let's be clear here. But cynicism would qualify because it's basically fuck your philosophy. It doesn't make any fucking sense when you break it down. Like... <laughs> I bring it up every time I bring up Diogenes, the fact that uh, when, when I think it was, uh, I can't remember who it was now, right now, I, I usually can, but there was a philosopher who was like trying to define what makes a human a human, and that human uh, was defined as uh, <laughs> a, f a, a featherless biped, um, and the the whole the whole notion of trying to define what a human is by something that yeah yeah there we go uh plato by something that simple is kind of fucking retarded but this was in the beginning anyway and in order to demonstrate how that was stupid uh fucking diogenes comes in with a plucked chicken and throws it into the crowd <laughs> because it's a featherless biped. And so then Plato renames humans to a featherless biped with broad flat nails. Yep. So I like I like Diogenes quite a bit. He was very good at poking holes in people's bullshit. Uh but just to get into the the political theories section here. Anti-statism is a common element in anarchist and libertarian political philosophy. Anarchism is defined by its principal aim of abolishing the state and its institutions. According to anarchist doctrine, the state is a tool of domination and coercion that is illegitimate regardless of political tendencies. On the other hand, libertarianism seeks to maximize liberty and political freedom as its core principles. This may include either a complete or partial opposition to state power with the goal of abolishing or restricting the state. So, just to, okay, just to throw this in, in the mix here, fuck anyone who says that libertarians have to be minarchists and um, 
and 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 who claim that if you're an anarchist you can't call yourself libertarian that is not true it's not true just throwing that out there because it's it's happened to me way too many times when i've called myself a libertarian and i have to explain to people that libertarianism existed before the fucking 70s when the political party was formed but they still don't listen most of them so <laughs> fuck them um like it was it was politically a term for like over a hundred years before the libertarian party was formed don't delude yourself americans you're not that fucking inventive um so <laughs> i just have to throw that in there you know especially since i have a little bit more energy since i'm recording earlier um Communist approaches to anti-statism center on the relationship between political rule and class struggle. Karl Marx defined the state as the institution used by the ruling class of country to maintain the conditions of its rule. To this extent, the ultimate goal of communist society was theorized as both stateless and classless. Political movements may adopt anti-statist principles for other reasons, such as aesthetic, ideological, or religious beliefs, or as a result or of social or political marginalization. Examples of this may include resistance movements under military occupation or a conflicting regime. And then they include egoism, which I'll read because I've got some egoist people and I would hate to snub them. Uh, in egoist philosophy, self-interest is held as the grounding principle of human action, morality, or both. Max Stirner proposes that most commonly accepted social institutions, such as the notion of the state, morality, and property rights, are mere illusions or ghosts in the mind. In this way, non-compliance to government authority is always justified. And there's they included a quote uh, by Henry David Thoreau, Resistance to Civil Government. Uh, really good, by the way. Read it. I heartily accept the motto that government that government is best which governs least. And I should like to see it acted up to more rapidly and systematically. Carried out, it finally amounts to this, which I also believe. That government is best which governs not at all. And when men and women are prepared for it, that will be the kind of government which they will have. Based. So, the general idea here is, if you're anti-statist, you're against not only the government, but also everything the government produces. You know? And really it's more like this, because this the, the government is this tiny little thumb over here, and everything that they create is like so many elements. And then these elements reify the government's power to tighten their chokehold on us all. Um, they all act as fingers on the hand. And if you don't agree with that, then it's because you haven't looked into this enough. Now, I read a Wikipedia page. There is so much more to this. Just read Bakunin. Uh, read Lysander Spooner. Read Henry David Thoreau. Read Albert J. Nock if you don't like leftists. Uh, read uh, Anatomy of the State by a Rothbard if you don't like leftists. But, like, try to understand what you're talking about before you talk about it, because I am so sick of explaining to people that the state is not just government. How can you call uh, the state simply limited to official institutions when so many institutions act under official capacity through state authority, which are, quote, not the government. You shouldn't. You should call all of these the state because they're the fucking state. If I act as an apparatus of somebody else, I am part of them at that point. If I become a hitman and carry out an assassination, that is on me, but it's also on the person who sent the order. Not that I'm doing that, by the way, FBI, that was just a fucking example. My whole point is that, like, if you agree to be part of something, you're part of it. And you, you're not divorced from it. When I worked at Jack in the Box, if somebody said, that Jack in the Box, I couldn't then say, you know... I'm not a part of that. I just work there. I just do what they want me to for money. No! And I did, by the way, work at a jack-in-the-box. Do not recommend. It was one of the worst experiences of my life, and I'm glad I got to quit eventually. 
but the point is that like no uh you you can't work on somebody's behalf for the privileges for the pay for the etc that they provide while not also being part of their organization leftists already talked about this for a long time and part of the reason that rightists don't like to talk about the origin of libertarian theory or anarchist thought is because the anti-liberal notions that a lot of original leftists came up with kind of put nails in a lot of their theories kind of bury them a little and the the right doesn't like that because they want to think that they can just come in muscle the term away and it'll be that way forever and to a certain extent they're fucking right because a lot of leftists use the word libertarian to imply only the libertarian party and rightists in america too so it's like they are not doing themselves a whole fuck of a lot of favors here um by not using the term themselves i i feel like a crazy person sometimes and i know i look like a crazy person too I'm well aware of the irony of that statement, but at the same time, it's like history is so easy to fucking access, and it's just like a few clicks away, but most people are not interested in fucking trying. They, they, they don't care, um, and they don't ask questions, they just want you to assume that you're wrong. Well... I do not take your assumption. I, I've, I've looked into this enough. I know what I'm talking about here. And I still oppose the use of the term cathedral because I am not going to constantly give traffic to Menicus Moldbuck. Curtis Yarvin, by the way, is his actual name. I'm not going to do that because I'm not a reactionary. I don't think there was a time when America was great to be brought back to. Make America great again is trash. Because it implies that there was some golden era of America. For fucking who? For racial minorities? Nah. For women? Nah. For people that weren't a part of the U.S. government? Nah. Genocides happened to those people. Enslavement happened to those people. Mistreatment in the home happened to those people. Let's not embellish or fucking gild this lily, bitches. All government is bad. Like, is that really even up for discussion from an anarchist perspective? And if you're not an anarchist, then don't tell me how to describe how to get rid of government. Because you're not interested in that. You want to maintain st state power. If you're not in this for anarchist ends, maybe that's why you don't know what the state is from an anarchist perspective. So, anyway, now that I'm done alienating a significant amount of people, um, let me just finish it out with something like this. You know, I, I feel like there could be a lot of unity if we could just agree on terms and i feel like the state already exists as a very effective term to describe things i feel like rejecting huge sides of people because you don't like some of them um and haven't gotten to know even what their theories are apparently is fucking counterproductive if you truly want the government gone because you need to not only be the fringe but be the example for the fringe living a life that would mean that you don't need a government and you then also need to prove that uh, that you can live without government influence i'm not even doing well on that score yet you know i live on a i live in a city on the grid i'm i'm you know supporting corporations by buying their 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 sweet potato energy drinks and shit um and and and, and their creatine and getting two day shipping and no I'm not sponsored by V8 or 6 Star Nutrition the point is that like I'm not perfect either but at least I have the right mentality and I'm trying to shoot for it unlike people who just say 
that we don't like government, but we won't fight what it creates or admit that what it creates is part of it. Uh, and that's a significant problem in right libertarian circles because of the right part, because a lot of them don't want to admit that maybe working with the left might be a good and or necessary idea. And that's going to be their downfall because the left has centuries of fucking anti-statist activism under their belt. But the point is that American libertarianism came later and it was around later and it should be treated that way. Um, not necessarily as lesser, but definitely it shouldn't eschew the traditions as they were, right? Let's be real here. Let's say maybe the fact that it comes from those guys doesn't make it wrong. Hmm? Can we do that? Can we? Do oh, no, we can't do that. We can't. Because if we united, then uh, the, the state might be opposed, and we can't have that. No. So let's call it the cathedral and link back to alt-right and neo-reactionary blogs who talk about it from that perspective. I'm sure that'll make libertarianism look nice and fucking shiny to the people on the outside. I'm sure that it won't reject the wholesale uh, thing where a whole bunch of right libertarians, including Rothbard, said that maybe we should listen to the left too and that maybe the left has good perspectives. I'm sure that it won't disrespect the agorist tradition uh, by spitting on the left libertarianism that Konkin supported. I'm sure that it won't uh, that it won't spit on a huge amount of libertarian tradition by saying, hey, you know, your, your, your term, the state, it just means government now. It doesn't mean the things you said it meant. It doesn't mean the things that it originally meant. We'll just say this and then say that the cathedral needs to be created as a term because we want to point back to Yarvin. That's really what it is. That's all it is. Because otherwise they would use the state because the state already described it. They just like Yarvin. I don't, though. So I'm going to keep not using that term. Anyway, uh, by that token, smash the state. <laughs>